You are listening to Shadow Horse Theater Broadcasting. We come to you from the shadowy fields of Minnesota with Dark Pony Radio Show, presented to you by the Dark Pony Players, featuring Jim Aarons, and introducing the Dark Gentleman. This episode is sponsored by FNX Fitness. We become greater when we rise up together. Supplements should taste good, and if you're going to drink protein, greens, or even pre-workout, don't skip out on good flavor and quality ingredients. FNX Fitness has the best flavors and prides itself on being locally sourced with no fillers. Visit our fiendish friends at www.fnxfit.com and use code DARKPONY to receive 40% off at checkout. And our other sponsor, The Living Artist Podcast. Don't wait until you're dead to make a living as an artist. And now is, as always, The Pale Lady. (laughs) (laughs) Here we are, my children of the night. My sweet and I have found a story that twists and tantalizes your sense of reality. My lord, lovely, we get to bring them all back to Antarctica. Delicately desolate wasteland with boundless Brobdignagian mountain ranges. Months after the first exploration, a new team has set forth on an adventure to summon an ancient world. My darling, I can recall the time when we were first brought to this plane. The three of us, young, lost, and hungry. Vexatious memories of the past, my paradoxical paramour. Let us return to madness. (laughs) (laughs) Arkham Advertiser, mail delivery. Oh, Cyprus. Yeah? I have this package for you. It looks a bit beaten up. We weren't sure if you wanted it. There is no return address. Well, let me see. Sand? Is that all there is there? No, not all. There's a a journal and a small wire recorder. Wire recorder? Yeah, Yeah, these devices are rare, especially one so small. Looks damaged a bit, but the wire coils seem complete. Hmm, well... Time for me to move on. Yeah, okay. Uh, Lily? Yes? Could you please run back and get me the wire recorder for playback? Yes. Okay, thank you. Now, let's take a seat at the desk. Look at this journal. Find out where you came from and from whom. My name is Terrence Moore, and I'm one of the leads on this expedition. I was also employed at the Arkham Advertiser and historian with a focus in ancient cultures and religious practices. I joined with Dr. Meriworth Starkweather, an astrophysicist from the famed Miskatonic University. We had heard rumblings of the fated Dyer Pabodi expedition, and although life was lost, we felt further exploration was needed. I had an opportunity to visit with Dr. Dyer about their previous expedition. I was a bit apprehensive about returning to Antarctica. Dr. Dyer had a maddening experience filled with death and horror. We hope to have learned from their mistakes and discover the truth of what is hidden in those mountains of madness. Meriworth and I recruited a couple other individuals to join the expedition. L. Shorelander, the world's foremost survivalist and linguistics expert. Shorelander had discovered several lost temples in South America, as well as a possible location of the fated Atlantis the mysterious Baron Vonderberg, supposed descendant of an infamous monster hunter, an expert tracker. The Baron and their predecessors have been noted in several supernatural events across the globe. Lastly, we brought a survivor from the first expedition, Danforth, a former grad student that witnessed similar events with Dr. Dyer and who makes their home at the asylum. (sighs) Damn, Terry, what have you gotten into now? Cyprus? Yeah? Here's the wire recorder equipment you requested. Thank you. What is with the sand on the desk? Don't know yet. Hopefully, this recording will tell me. Good luck. Is this working? 
Did I turn it on right? Hey, press there, I believe. Ugh, this new technology. Terry, I thought you were just going to write this stuff down. Uh, this will be easier. Just trust me. Fine. Um, mm. <clears throat> this is Dr. Merriworth Starkweather, leader of the Starkweather Moor expedition to Antarctica. We were expecting a rough adventure through the mountains and the stone city. As of now, we have heard nothing nor seen anything. The catabatic winds seem to be non-existent. Terence Moore here, uh, recorder of the expedition and historian. I concur. Even the signs of madness from isolation and cold have not affected us as of now. Danforth has been silent the entirety of this expedition, which has been a bit unnerving. Terence, stop walking. Terry, you need to halt. Baron, what is it? My dear, look down. I see nothing. Precisely. You are on the edge. We have reached the abyss. Shoreland. Oh, step aside, Doctor. This is why I'm here. I'll throw this rock into the abyss to check the depth, so I'll, I'll need silence. I did not hear it hit ground. I do not believe I was mistaken. You're correct, Baron. I fear it may be the end of the road here. I do not recommend descending this with such an unknown barrier. This expedition has been a wash. All the hope we had clearly was misplaced. What a waste of resources. Terence, let's head back, pack up our gear, and start the long journey home. What an absolute waste. The crawling chaos is moving. Therefore? What did you say? The cavern rim is here. Welcome to the plateau. Madness. Oh, Baron, this is what I was waiting for. Go on, c continue, Danforth. The eyes in the darkness see me, know me. Mr. Moore, they see you as well. What is this? He doesn't talk the entirety of this trek and now decides to speak in nonsense. Please, everyone. Something has changed. There is an uneasy heaviness in the air. The last time I had such a feeling, my companion was lost. Stay vigilant. I hear something. I recognize that sound. It's approaching fast from below. How is that possible? Stand back, everyone. Cover your face. Where did the sandstorm come from? Dr. Starkweather. It matters not. Everyone, hold on to something. I'll tie off a rope to the fallen pillar behind us. Everyone, grab on. The Elder Pharaoh's lights our way. Madness. We shall follow. Mr. Moore, come. Let it take us. No, Danforth, don't jump. Too late, Terrence. It's already gone. Oh, dear. Feels like we are getting slack on the rope. Baron, the rope is slipping. I'll try and secure us better. My hands? I, I can't hold on. I'm slipping. Damn it, Terry. Hold on. Please. Help. R R R everyone. Terry! <laughs> Forward. Forward, Mr. Moore. Awake. first recording seems a little damaged. Cyprus? Oh, oh. <laughs> Lily, you startled me. May I help you? Curiosity has just been getting the best of me. Uh, yeah, yeah, please, sit down here. Did you find out who sent the package? Not quite. I'm assuming it came from Terry. Terry? Well, it seems to be his journal. He's on the recording. I need to be here then. Uh, here, look at the journal. Will I hook up the next spool? Yes. It's been about a couple hours. How am I alive? The last thing I remember was falling into the sandstorm abyss. And now I'm sitting on a desert dune. <laughs> At least it's cool here. The moon has risen and is in full force. I was hoping to find Danforth here, but I don't see them anywhere. 
There are footprints leading away from me. I should follow them. What? What is that sound? That's the end of the entry. But there are several more pages of writing. I got the second recording working. It would be good to hear Terry's voice again. Got it. <sighs> the recording is back up. Dr. Starkweather, Baron, Shorelander. Are you all okay? Of course not, Terrence. We all fell into an abyss. What do you think? <laughs> that was a ride. But yes, I am better than one would expect. Good to hear, Baron. Terry, did you see my supply bag around here? Yes. Uh, this one with the electric torch. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. Didn't want to lose all my notations. What of Danforth, Terry? I have not seen them. But there are tracks leading away from here. Uh, let me see. Yeah, we must hurry. Sand imprints don't last long and could be buried quickly in the desert. Follow me. Terry, does this place seem familiar to you? Uh, yes, it does, Maryworth. Feels like our expedition to the Rubicali? Hmm, you thought the nameless city would be there. You don't think we found the doorway? Well, it's possible. All we needed was a different entry point and someone to show the way. You think Danforth was the missing piece we need? Very well. We are out of our depth here. I think we should scrub the expedition and find a way back. Balderdash! Baron? Is this not what we joined you for? To adventure the unknown? To find answers? Was it not you, Dr. Starkweather, that told us? It was a dire need to bring back the Outer Gods. You are correct, my dear Baron. We are on the verge of resurrection, and it's up to us to stop that ridiculous Cthulhu cult. We must bring back the Outer Gods. I don't realize that, Maryworth. If this is the Rubicali, finding a way out will be exceptionally dangerous. Terry, if we succeed, our return path will be shown to us. We have come too far to stop now. Besides, if we stop and the resurrection happens, hope will be lost. Terry, you are the one who convinced me to do this expedition. You are the one who did all the research and brought us our crew. Trust in this team, Terrence, you brought together. Do you really want to stop now? Imagine all that you will get to doctor. Maybe I'm just a bit nervous. We all are. Shorelander? Why have you stopped? Up ahead. Looks like a stone city. Similar to the one we were at in Antarctica. Only I can see a pyramid rising in the distance. Huh. Looks like mountains wrapping around the wall of the city. Now, those are sand dunes. Probably the highest you'll ever see. Amazing. Oh, Terry, there's, there's someone standing up ahead. Oh, could be Danforth. Be cautious as you approach. Something's not right here. There's been this stillness around us. Probably the footsteps have changed. It could just be the sand. Either way, be aware. Danforth? Mr. Moore. What is it? Do you hear it? Yes. The way ahead is being prepared for us. The golden temples are where we will be together. Listen, Mr. Moore. Never stop listening. It will show you the truth. Danforth? Where did you get the knife? From the crawling chaos. Shorelander, come quickly. The skin is a shell. I must release the colorless from inside. Stop. D Danforth, stop. Terry, grab him. I'm trying. He just keeps carving into with his arm. I'll help. Let them go. Dr. Starkweather. He is right, Shorelander. Let Danforth go. Albeit mad as they are. Sometimes... You have to let the beast run wild. 
We are in uncharted territory. Danforth may be the only one that can help us get out of this, the empty quarter. Fine. Terry, let's let the beast run mad. Come. Come to the windowless room. Shorelander, you will help us follow him. I've got a feeling he is heading exactly where we need to go. Yes, of course. I was hoping something like this would happen. Like a moth to a flame. Well put, my dear Baron. Let them get a little further ahead before we continue. We have actually reached it. A nameless city. The Necronomicon was correct. It's a city lost in time and to the desert. Look at the beautiful architecture, completely intact. I would have thought most of it would be lost to the desert. Look up at the night sky. Does it look odd to you? Like the stars are wrong? Mm, well, they, they look right to me. Baron, what do you think? I've spent many nights alone under these stars. I know them well. And as far as I can tell, they look like they always have. Beautiful. I can spend the rest of the night just gazing into that unknown. L, we do not have the time. There's more to learn up ahead. Let us venture forward and accomplish what we set out to do. The windowless... Crawling. Mr. Moore, are you joining us? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm coming. It's about time, Terrence. What were you doing back there? Uh, um, taking in the moonlight. We have arrived, Terrence. What could be more important? Lad... Are you feeling all right? It, 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 yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Baron, I, just still a bit dizzy with everything. Everyone turn on your torches. We may need them in the buildings ahead. Oh, look at this archway. It usually stands 80 feet at the apex. It's not ornate, but it's smooth. From the right angle, it feels like we're walking in the Great Pyramid itself. The walls are smooth and sealed. Clearly, it's been here for several hundred years, but still looks relatively untouched. Now, uh, Terry Baron, look at this. I do not see any written language or cuneiform style on the structure itself. <laughs> Intriguing. There, there must be more temples around the area. It does feel like a religious infrastructure. Terry, you're, you're our religious expert. You know more about the outer gods, fellows. I agree. This temple we are in now seems like a chapel of sorts, or even just a smaller space for worship. No visible signs of an altar or worship space in the traditional sense. I could assume it was a market space or a social gathering room. It doesn't matter. We are here for the golden door. Doctor, you promised me I'd have time to study these structures. L, did you not get enough research done in Antarctica? I barely had a chance to make notations. L, once we get to the golden door, you can have full reign as much time as you want. Very well, Doctor. What was that? Did you hear that? I do not hear anything. Come now, everyone. This narrow hallway leads to another temple ahead. Could be what I'm looking for. What we are trying to find. Here is your ritual space, El and Terrence. My God, do you see that, Terry? How could I not? After the narrow hallway, this room opens up into what I would say is probably a main worship room. It is massive in size and easy 80-foot ceiling. Terry, this altar was built to inhuman size. The tabletop has to be at least 10 by 6 foot. Polished marble stone top. And the question now is, what was it used for? Look above us! A skylight carved in a five-point star and is allowing the moonlight to hit it perfectly, creating an interesting shape on the altar itself. It seems to outline those carvings on 
the top part of the altar. Oh, the architects seem to have known exactly where to place the ritual table. A true centerpiece, amazing. Look, look, there. there's a raised step around the altar. It has a particular reflective surface, like a, like a glass plane, a diamond infused into the stone. You can have your image reflected in prostration to the gods. Sure, Leonard. Look over here, dear. A murals. Finally. Finally, we get a picture story. What are these creatures? They, they look almost like crocodiles in nature, but, but smaller. Similar to that of a, a satyr. Terry? Uh, they are mentioned in other texts. These creatures may have been the caretakers of the temples themselves, alongside the ancient humans of the time. The texts do not say if they were the architects or if the outer gods themselves directed the creation of the cities and temples. I believe the outer gods used an emissary to speak on their behalf and help direct both these creatures and humanity to do the bidding of the gods. There are texts that support those findings. I was hoping to find some murals that would give a clearer insight to whether this emissary truly lived or was just a term given to the religious leaders of the time. And no. Uh, we must push on. The immensity of this place could keep us busy for a decade. As I've said, we will have time to explore after we achieve what we came here to do. If you want to stay here, fine. Anyone can stay. I will continue. I, I mean, we will continue to the Golden Door without you. Dr. Starkweather, this is my expedition just as much as it is yours. Look, I don't understand this push you keep forcing. We should be allowed the time to at least understand what we're walking into. We've all gone through the provided material. After a short time in Antarctica, it's still not enough to understand what's happening here, let alone how we are to get home. I have this feeling. It's urging me forward. Where is Danforth? To hell with Danforth. Merriworth, we have a responsibility for Danforth's safe return. We brought him here and exposed them to the madness again. Terence, I do not care about Danforth. Their life was forfeit the moment they jumped into the abyss. <laughs> oh, what about my life? Or Els, or the Barons, are they forfeit too? What about your life? You all knew the risks for this expedition. Our lives don't matter. Unless we reach the Golden Door and finish what we started. It's the only way to prevent the resurrection. Doctor, are you feeling well? I'm fine. <laughs> the air about us is thick. I fear we are not alone anymore been hearing crawling on the sand or walls. It could be a desert animal, but I fear there may be something else. <laughs> Tamforth? Tamforth, is that you? I'm sure they are up ahead. Be careful. The staircase downward could be tricky. Hold up, Terry. Look at this. Up above us on the overhang of the stairwell. I recognize this mural. I I've seen this in Danforth's materials and back in the dome in Antarctica. Yeah, but this seems more violent. Look at the detail on this. The elder things ripping apart what appears to be humans. In the background of this massacre are two cities, one with a large dome appearance, the other with a large pyramid. And the cities have very similar buildings and structures around them between the mountains and the sands. Six feet end to end, three and five tenths feet central diameter, tapering to one foot at each end, like a barrel with five bulging ridges in place of staves. Lateral breakages as of thinnish stalks are at the equator in the middle of these ridges. The furrows between ridges are curious growths, combs or wings that fold up and spread out like fans, which gives almost a seven foot wing spread. <laughs> these creatures are absolutely more horrifically beautiful than I ever thought they could be. Uh, Terry, in, in the centerpiece, the mural depicts a ritual room similar to what we were just in, but painted gold. It has carvings on the pillars and walls. Oh, look, up in the corners there, those orbs like small glowing spheres gathered round them. Uh, Starkweather, you should look at this. 
No time. Shorlander, take note and let's move on forward. We are almost to the bottom. Dr. Starkweather, I really do insist you look at this mural. This place feels wrong. I do not care what you insist, Baron. You are invited along if we ran into any creatures we couldn't face. Clearly, you are of no more use, seeing I found what I was looking for. You can stay here for all I care. All of you can stay here if you keep pulling me away from reaching the Golden Door. Very well, Dr. Starkweather. If that is how you feel, I will not continue with you. And I beg the rest of you to stay as well. I can't leave now. I need to keep exploring these temples. So much more to learn. I agree with Shorelander. On top of that, I want to find Danforth. I can't leave them out here without a chance to get back. Understandable. And noble. I will stay and find a way back. I hope to see you all again. Enough dawdling. We are close. I can feel it. Let's keep walking forward. We are opening up to another pathway. Mary with? I feel like someone is watching us. Karen, there is nothing there. I assure you, we are more than safe. I can't help it. I swear, I keep hearing something. Ah, unbelievable. The gateway ahead. Look at the detail and ornateness of the two pillars. One on each side, each coated in gold, with painted turquoise along the top ledge. On each pillar are... Uh, Looks like, uh, like a list of names, but in a language I've never seen before. It's Rohelian. What? Language of the Elder Ones. Uh, it says, I call death. The Agsafoth answers. Here they call trembling. And then you are correct. There is a list of ancient names. Then there is this phrase on the other pillar. This dark pledge I seal with my immortal soul. We are finally here. That is a golden door. It's massive, circular in shape, looks like a, a vault door. How are we to move such an object? But wait, the detail on the floor, the etchings, is that more religion? It could be instructions on how to open it. Doesn't matter. We just need to go inside. And the answers will be there. Don't think we should do that. This could also be a warning. In the windowless room, Yog Sothoth watches. I'm going back to get the Baron. Fine. Leave, Shorelander. You are just as worthless. I will find a way inside. <laughs> on its own. We are expected. You must have stepped on a trigger plate to open it. Why are you still here? Go run away, Shorelander. Only Terrence and I are needed for this part anyway. Come on. Let's go. Terry, be careful. It's so bright in here. I can barely see. I see someone standing in the middle of the room. Who is that? Danforth? The windowless room. Prepared. Danforth! What have you done to yourself? You carved your face into a five-point star? Your, your, your arms. You flayed your arms. Shh. Hear them. Listen. They call you. Hear us. Hear us. Terry. Terry. What are those things around the room? Terry, listen. The emissary. Now the hotel is here. Listen. Yeah, yeah, I hear. I hear. 
I see. I understand in the darkness the truth. I finally see you, Meriwith. Those orbs and these eyes floating around us, watching, watching, <laughs> always watching. The windowless room is unlocked. Yog Sothoth is upon us. They must be released. Dan for Secure Dr. Starkweather. Dan, stop. Why are you approaching me? Ah, damn it. Dan, bro, let me go. Meriwet, your sacrifice will open the portal for the outer god to enter this universe. No, please. This is not what was supposed to happen. This is not what I was shown. Please stop, Terry. I don't want to die. Get your hands off me, Dan Forth. Crawling chaos is now in the light. Use my knife on With this knife, I shall lock the mysteries from beyond. I will show you truth. Ah! Oh, no! Please! Bask, Danforth. Bask in the husk of the soon-to-be god yog Sartha. Harry, please. Stop. Come to us, Yag Sathoth. Your humble, faithful await you. You are mine. Show these mine. Baron, look. Terry's bag is sitting on the ground here, near the door. Ah. The recorder. It looks as if it's still recording. Oh my god! Uh, what did we just hear? Oh, Terry. I feel sick. Is there more recorded? No, no that, that was the last wire. Lily, check the journal. Cypress, there are weird drawings and markings. Phrases. Crawling chaos repeated over and over again. The name Naira Lahotep. It just says, Beware, Naira Lahotep. Have you heard that name before? Wait, there is a final entry. My name is El Shorelander. These recordings, and what's written in this journal of Terence Moore, may seem unbelievable. But I can assure you, it's every bit real. The recording shall explain all that happened, for what I witnessed afterwards has become my waking nightmare. I finally met up with the Baron, and we started back together to the Golden Door. It appeared to be sealed tightly and seemed less magnificent compared to what I saw before. It was almost grey-looking. The door, although massive in size and scope, surprisingly moved with ease. We entered the room, slowly and steadily, at the ready in case we needed to make a swift exit. Both the Baron and I called out to Terry and Dr. Starkweather, but silence was sent to us in return. Darkness engulfed us as I slowly stepped forward, forcing us to use a torch. Once the light hit the room, it refracted around the golden walls, allowing us a view I, I will never forget. There on the altar, was Dr. Starkweather's body splayed out, his internal organs grossly removed and ornately placed round him in five different points. On the walls were words written in that ancient language with blood. The room itself was windowless, had no visible exit outside of the golden door. Just a couple steps ahead on the ground was Terry's bag with the wire recorder and this journal, along with a ritual-looking knife covered in blood. Terry was nowhere to be found. And we never saw Danforth again. The Baron and I decided to head back out to the desert and see if we could reach a town or village. Hello? This is the desk of Terence Moore. Hello? Uh, 
I can hear you. Are you there? Hello? Hello. Is, uh, is Terrence Moore there? I'm afraid not at this time. I can get someone who can help you. Please hold. Of course, of course. Thank you. I'll take it, Lily. Hello, this is Cypress. I'm an associate with Mr. Moore. They're uh, currently on a trip. I'm not sure of the return date. May I ask who's calling? My name is Dr. William Dyer. I've just got a visitor that I think Mr. Moore would like to speak with. Dr. Dyer? Well, I can take a message, or maybe I can help. I'm not sure, but, but here, why don't you talk with him? No, it's okay. Uh, gra- here, grab the phone. His name is Cypress, and is an associate of Terry. Hello? Hello? It's okay. Hello? <clears throat> My name is Danforth. What? The last thing I remember is talking with Terrence Moore back in the asylum. So, you don't remember anything after that? I want to know what's going on. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. What has happened to me? Are you okay? I don't know. I don't know. But when you two met... That was almost a year ago. Please, what's going on? Danforth, I don't fully know. I'll try and help the best I can, I promise. It's all right. Cypress, yeah, Danforth is in rough shape. Scars all over the face, missing skin, which seems to have healed over on their arms. I, too, am experiencing gaps in my memory, but I feel clear-headed like a, like a mist has been lifted. Could you come by and tell us what's happening? We're at my old office at the Miskatonic University. The dean has been gracious enough to let me use the space. I can try. I'll, I'll bring some of Terry's journals and wire recordings, but I, I don't know if it'll help. I'm just learning about what's been going on myself. Anything would help. Thank you. Goodbye. Lily, I, I don't know what Terry has gotten us all into, but we could just walk away right now. I couldn't do that. I want to get Terry back. Well, then grab the wire recorder in your bag. Let's head out. Do you hear that? Oh, sounds like musical piping. What sweet sounds of dissonance ringing through our ears. Oh, my disillusioned little Madlians, alas, we have reached that moment where we must part ways. Oh, but it is only a short few weeks until we graciously gravitate towards another story, bringing you closer and closer with our benediction. We bid you good night and And adieu. adieu. You've just heard tonight's performance of the Dark Pony Radio Show with voices from the Dark Pony players, Matt Sachs, Max Bessner, Matthew Kelly, TJ Jacobs, Terrell Woods, and Mara Rose, featuring Jim Ahrens. Sound designer and engineering from Benjamin Conklin. A Haunting for the Ages, written by M. Terrell Woods, performed by Carnage the Executioner, courtesy of The Artist. Tonight's performance was an original adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft's The Nameless City by Matthew Kelly. Sponsored by FNX Fitness. We become greater when we rise up together. And The Living Artist Podcast. Don't wait until you're dead to make a living as an artist. This has been a Shadow Horse Theater production. <laughs>